podium to do our Devar Torah. Me too. I'm going to get up. Shabbat Shalom. Starting in elementary school and all the way through middle school and high school, I had difficulty focusing and concentrating because of childhood depression, which was not diagnosed until my adult years. One consequence was that I had lower than average reading skills. Emotionally, I felt inadequate and stigmatized. I didn't feel motivated to learn because I believed I could never do as well as my peers. These were all curses in my opinion, yet they were hidden blessings too, which I did not realize until later in life. I worked very hard in school, went to college and on to graduate school. I decided I would help others. So with my master's degree in adult education, I pursued a federal government career in human resources development. This means I worked closely with employees by providing them with mentoring programs, and I managed a summer internship program. Most meaningful of all, now in my retirement years, I've been tutoring those same children, first graders, like me, who have, diffi who have difficulty focusing and processing information. I understand them and know that when I was a child, I would have loved to have had someone older and more experienced than me reach out and help me not only to read, but to feel cared for. What I once saw as a curse was in fact also a blessing. In our parasha, our Torah portion, the Chuk Katai, God threatens the Israelites with many curses. Quote, if you do not obey me and do not observe these commandments, if you reject my laws and spurn my rules, so that you do not observe all the commandments and you break my covenant, I in turn will do this to you. I will wreak misery upon you." End of quote. The Torah then lists curse after curse after curse, more curses and blessings in fact, but in the end we discover a softening, an easing up of God's reproaches. Quote, Yet even then when they are in the land of their enemies, I will not reject them or spurn them so as to destroy them, annulling my covenant with them. For I am, I am their God. God is there for the Israelites, despite all the curses God has bestowed upon them. Even with this softening at the end, I still had a lot of difficulty with this parasha. Really, I didn't like it. It was hard to relate to a God who bestows curses such as, quote, reeking consumption and fever, which causes the eyes to pine and the body to languish. I had to really dig to find something positive or hopeful. 20th century Rabbi W. Gunther Plout, author and editor of the Torah, a modern commentary, helped. He says, quote, Leviticus 26 concludes with a picture of ruin and dispersion, yet voices the, voices the assurance that God will not abandon the people of Israel forever. He goes on to say, quote, our chapter, be it noted, deals not only with physical rewards and punishments, but also with spiritual concerns. It alludes to the calm assurance that comes with rectitude and to the mindless terror that in moments of adversity grips that in moments of adversity grips those who are not sustained by a clear conscience and the sense of God's nearness. In other words, while the Torah tells us about physical curses, there is also a spiritual element, an element of hope buried within the curses, a hope built on trust in God. Does this mean we can see the blessing when we are despairing and feeling terror? Personally, I often cannot do so. 
Instead, we need to know God will never abandon us. How so? Perhaps God is testing us, taking the training wheels away to see how we do. It is a leap of faith that leads to the idea that there is hope at the end of the tunnel. The ho this hope is light. To some, it is God. We just have to see it. I remember once during a time of struggle, taking a walk and noticing the trees, flowers, the sky, and feeling a sense of peace. Was I in that moment conscious of God's nearness? I don't know. But I have called upon these nature meditations to help me when I struggle. I had really struggled in school, and while there were times when I did not want to try, they were temporary. I kept going, seeking out mentors, finding a therapist, and I grow and continue, and I grew and I continue to grow. God helped me to overcome these curses, turn them into blessings, even if I did not realize it. Yet, experiencing the nearness of God does nothing if we ourselves don't do the work. What are each of our curses? How have we turned them around? Perhaps we struggled like I did at school or perhaps at work. Maybe we faced an illness or injury, financial difficulties, moments of despair. Each of these is a curse, and yet I hope that we can grow and learn from them. I hope we can find God in these moments. May each of us turn curses into blessings. My prayer for each and every one of us is that we see our curses, be aware of them, name them, wrestle with them, and come out on the other side with a changed perspective. May we each have the courage to face our curses head on and be blessed in the end. Shabbat Shalom.